In this episode, we speak with Dr. John Oyston, who worked for almost 40 years as an anesthesiologist and has seen the damage that tobacco does to the human body. He recently wrote a blog post about the common myths of vaping. Hey, thanks for joining us. Dr. Oyston has kindly agreed to take questions from vapers, vendors, and the general public about the misinformation campaigns of governments, public health organizations, and the media. I keep hearing on the news that vaping causes water in the lungs. Is this true? Uh, there isn't any evidence that vaping does that. Vaping does have some mild damage to the lungs, but it causes more things like cough and wheezing in some people. Um, I'm not aware of anything that says that vaping causes water on the lungs. Doctors believe they discovered a new type of lung injury related to vaping. The number of people affected by vaping-related illnesses has doubled. They keep saying in the news that vaping causes a valley. Is this true? Okay, the good thing about Ivali was it's gone. Okay, Ivali was something that happened in the second half of 2019, almost exclusively in the United States, and it was eventually tracked down to illegal cannabis vaping that had been deliberately contaminated with vitamin E acetate. It had nothing to do with legal vaping with nicotine products. So we don't have to worry about Ivali at all. It's unfortunate that Ivali, the name, is an acronym for e-cigarette and vaping product associated lung injury, but it's entirely due to contaminated cannabis vape. I've had customers that have come in that are too scared to vape because of popcorn lung. There hasn't been a single person anywhere in the world who has ever got popcorn lung from vaping. More disturbing news about the dangers of vaping. Vaping may cause a unique type of lung damage. It's the purely theoretical list that has been made up to scare people. The amount of diacetyl in vape is exceedingly small. It's no longer added to vape. And as I said, there hasn't been a single person in the world who's got popcorn lung from vaping. Uh, and one source for that, by the way, is the Health Canada website. Health Canada says this has not happened. <coughs> oh, look, another popcorn kernel. Popcorn lung. I keep hearing in the media that nicotine causes cancer. No, it doesn't. So there are people who hate nicotine and they're desperate to try and find some evidence that it causes cancer, and they have not succeeded. Exposure to nicotine from e-cigarette vapor does in fact cause lung cancer. E-cigarettes turn on cancer-causing genes. Cigarette smoking causes cancer, tobacco causes cancer, but it's not the nicotine in cigarettes that causes cancer. It's the 7,000 other chemicals, including I think it's 80 known carcinogens that are present in tobacco smoke uh, that causes cancer. That the risk of getting cancer from vaping was less than one half of 1% of the risk of getting cancer from smoking. The GP has said to me that vaping is just as bad, if not worse, than smoking, as it will damage my heart. Is this true? Unfortunately, doctors around the world are very ignorant about vaping. Um, so in Canada, the figure is that 39% of family doctors think that vaping is as bad as cigarette smoking. Uh, but there's similar figures from various other countries. So doctors just hear that vaping is a bad thing for teenagers. They just read the same newspaper headlines that everybody else reads. And they don't actually read the reports from organizations like Public Health England or the Royal College of Physicians. And so they are just desperately misinformed. So when your doctor says that, just ignore them. Is it true that vaping has many, if not more, dangerous chemicals than cigarettes? I think you've got it the wrong way around. It's cigarette smoke that has the thousands of dangerous chemicals in it. So if you look at vape, it's actually a very similar, simple thing. There's only four things in vape juice. Propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, the flavoring if you want it, and nicotine if you want it. So the products that go into vape are incredibly simple. And then in the vaping process, it gets heated up, but it doesn't actually get burnt. So although there are very small quantities of some toxic chemicals in vape, and vaping is not harmless, it is way, way safer than cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking is the one that produces 7,000 chemicals. It's the one that kills 8 million people around the world every year. There's no evidence that anybody has died from nicotine vaping. 
Is secondhand vape as dangerous as secondhand smoke? No, it's not. Okay. So first of all, first-hand vape is very much less dangerous than first-hand smoke. Secondly, the mechanism of smoking and vaping is completely different. As soon as you light a cigarette, it starts producing smoke. And while you're not actually inhaling it, it produces sidestream smoke. The sidestream smoke is actually even more dangerous than the cigarette smoke that people inhale because the cigarette's burning at a lower temperature and it produces more toxic chemicals. So first of all, a cigarette produces more poisonous smoke for the entire time that it's lit. Whereas there isn't an equivalent for that. Vape only produces a vapor when you're actually using it. So all the vapor, first of all, goes into the person who's using it and it comes out afterwards. So there are probably some people who are allergic to some things in vape and in the same way that there's some people allergic to perfume. So you should be courteous about where you vape. Uh, but Public Health England says that there is no evidence that secondhand vape is harmful. They can cause poisoning, trauma and burns, lung injury. In terms of heart and lung disease, it's looking about as bad as smoking. And lastly, Dr. Oyston, I have a question for you. I'm going to read it to make sure I get it right, though. How do you think that the disinformation campaigns from governments, public health organizations, and some smoking cessation providers is impacting on people's perceptions and decisions around vaping? And why do you believe that this is happening? Okay, just um, to begin with an anecdote, I have a cottage and my next door neighbor at my cottage, I'd managed to get go from smoking cigarettes to vaping. And then Evali came along and without consulting me, she just decided, oh, no, actually, I'd, it seems that vaping might kill me instantly. I'd rather take my chances and die slowly from cigarette smoking. So that's just one person that I personally know, but it's, it's a common thing that you will find people who um, try vaping and then they hear a scare story and then they put off because people are very much more cautious about something that's unknown or unfamiliar. Whereas people kind of accept the fact that many people die from cigarette smoking. They usually die in older age and it's a, it's a risk that people seem to be able to tolerate. Electronic cigarettes or e-cigarettes heat liquid nicotine and other substances into a toxic aerosol. That can be it's interesting to know why there is so much disinformation. I certainly spoke the other day to somebody whose job it is to talk to school children about vaping. And she pretty much admitted that because it's her job to scare kids out of vaping, she tells them all about exploding vapes, which gets them very concerned. And it's true that once in a while, vapes do explode in the same way that anything with a lithium battery can explode or get on fire. But if you compare that to the number of people who die from smoking in bed or the people who die from forest fires started by cigarette butts, it's a crazy small number. And that's just a typical thing. People don't make comparisons between the known risks of cigarettes and the risks of vaping. You have to make a comparison between the two things, otherwise you don't get anywhere. It also seems to me that there's a lot of people who are heavily invested in the status quo. So that people who make money out of pharmaceutical smoking cessation products, a lot of people who run medical smoking cessation clinics, they'll have an, a deal with, say, Johnson & Johnson, so they can provide their customers with uh, free nicotine replacement therapy. Um, one of the big conferences in Canada is sponsored by Pfizer, and they couldn't run the conference at the price they do, except money from Pfizer. So there's a lot of conflicts of interest here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We hope you join us next time where we will do a review of the Asia Harm Reduction Forum, the Manila Declaration, and the CAFR white paper that was presented at the forum. Until then, stay safe and be well.